Just the tip, just the tip, just the tip. It's just the tip. My first just the tip for ZBO. This is Stassi Smith doing a little color theory 101 on analogous colors. So what are they? Well, analogous colors are those that are right next to each other on the color wheel. Usually one primary, which would be red, yellow, and blue, or a secondary, which would be green, purple, and orange, surrounded by two tertiary colors, which is any combination of a primary and secondary. Sounds like a lot of stuff, right? Well, actually, it's pretty easy. Um, here you have your primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, and your secondary colors, orange, purple, and green. And anything that surrounds these are going to be even more tertiary colors. Yellow green is a tertiary, blue green is a tertiary, you can read the map, right? So anyway, your analogous colors are those that are surrounding it. Um, though it's similar to monochromatic, it's not necessarily the same. For example, an artwork depicting various shades of blue would be monochromatic and analogous. But artwork depicting various shades of blue, violet, and green would be analogous only. So for example, the background you're looking at right now is analogous. It is not monochromatic. Um, so let's take a look. Usually they are in either cool shades or warm shades. That's typically what you'll find the artwork in when you're looking at analogous formations. So everything here that I'm highlighting, blue, violet, 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 red, that is really uh, a cool shade and green, blue, green, blue, blue, violet, this is a cool shade. Obviously the ones on the opposite side are considered more on the warm side, uh, although yellow, green, and green kind of eh, they can make it more neutral just as uh, red can make this top one a little more neutral. So to be truly analogous they work. All of these actually do work to be analogous colors. Okay, so here's some interesting art I thought was pretty funny, so I threw it in, and um, you get to decide, is it analogous, or is it just anal, or is it both? Anyway, uh, famous artists who use colored schemes were mostly impressionists. Uh, you have Monet, Camille Pizarro, Edgar Degas, and Pierre Bonnard. Monet uh, had a thing about water lilies, so you see he's got a nice analogous color scheme going on here with blue and green and violet. And then he has another one that has blue and green and little bits of violet here and there. He also has a little contrast going on here, and this is important to notice. Anytime you have a painting that is analogous, for the most part, and you add something contrasting to it, it makes the painting even more analogous, which is kind of a weird theory to explain, but if you can understand it, more power to you. Here you have another analogous painting that has uh, blue and green and violets and little bits of pink by adding white, which we call a tent. We'll get into that another time. Then you have Pizarro, Camille Pizarro, who's typically considered a post-impressionist, but this will work for now. This is kind of all within the red-brown range. Everything has bits of brown in it, and so that makes even the parts that look a little blue more like brown, thus creating an analogous color scheme. Uh, then you have uh, La Foi Deep, which I can't really pronounce, but it basically means the fair in deep and a sunny day. Um, 1901, and this is definitely analogous. When I mean, you're looking at that first upper right color scheme that we were looking at earlier for analogous colors, you have your yellows, oranges, little bits of reds here and there, but then on the other side you have your green. So definitely falls into that category. Um, then you have Degas Blue Dancers, and uh, all of these dresses obviously tutus, etc., costumes, whatever you want to call them, definitely in the analogous color scheme, but then he also goes into green, and he even takes the time to pull green into the flesh tones, which green is obviously related to yellow, so it really works as an analogous uh, painting. Then you have uh, Degas' Dancer Tilting, um, 1883, also an analogous color scheme, except for this right here. This red-brown really doesn't work, but again, going back to the contrasting we had in Monet's Water Lilies, it makes everything else around it more analogous by having that one little spot that doesn't make sense as far as the color scheme, and it also brings in just the little bits of red over here that are related to yellow on the other side. Then you have uh, La Toilette, uh, again, 
everything going in the orange to brown red range and then just a pop of color of blue over here just to throw you off um, and you have uh, a little something funny um, this I found on the web and I thought about how it is very closely related to the idea of analogous colors with the red browns up into the hair and then the whites going over into the silver over here um, then you have uh, Pierre Bonnard again playing with analogous colors in the orange reds and then popping little bits of green in here to make them even more orange and red and you have uh, pretty much a yellow based color scheme yellow going to red yellow going to flesh tones yellow going to green um, then you have uh, the cat which I just found hilarious but this is not only is this analogous but it is pretty much monochromatic at this point um, the little bit of green back here is not enough to deter from all of the yellow that's involved. So anyway, this is not analogous. And the reason why I put this up here is to explain that grayscale is not really analogous. That is a combination of two tertiary colors. Um, so therefore it doesn't really work. Um, as cute as the meme is of the baby panda, it's really considered more of a neutral. So we'll talk about that in another Just the Tip, and I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something a little useful, and uh, have a great day. Just the tip, just the tip, just the tip.